me, it's it's very much of a training or discipline of mind that we need to interpret a distraction as, as really a call for love. It's our own call for love. You know, it's calling us to to come back. Anything can be turned around once you interpret it in, in a helpful way. So instead of seeing it as something that's uh, negative or taking you away, it's just to recognize that that's one's own call. That's our call for love. And sometimes it's easier to recognize in terms of uh, with interpersonal relationships, there's someone's angry or upset and you can think that they're calling for love, but when you're working with your mind and you feel that you're being distracted, then sometimes it's not so easy to just see that that's one's own call for love. That's a call to come back. In my practice, what I've done is when I've had thoughts that I really feel are distractions, my practice has always been just giving them over to the Holy Spirit and saying, I, I, this is my gift to you, I'm giving you all my distractions. And um, in a sense, I start to realize that I, I can't own them in the ultimate sense, I have to hand them over. And uh, often things that, that can seem to be distractions when used by the ego can be turned around. So, for example, for me, like, there were times I know when I was a child and definitely during my teenage years where I, I used movies as escapism. I, I really would go to the movie theater to get away from my life. My life I considered was just dark and boring or frustrating and everything and I would want to go to the movie theater and just escape into another world. And I think I did that a bit with, with sports. Uh, different types of recreation, different types of entertainment. And when you get on the spiritual journey, you realize that the spirit can use anything of form. So some of the things that were even used before by the ego as distractions get brought in line, you know, with the spirit. I remember t taking that one of those early trips with Lisa when we were traveling across the country and um, and she was really down on herself for smoking, smoking cigarettes. She said, how's that going to work? I, I think cigarettes are a big distraction in my life and I'm really critical and I have a lot of guilt around smoking cigarettes and everything. I said, well, you watch this trip we take. Just watch, just give it over to the Holy Spirit and say, take the smoking and you use the smoking for your purposes. And then when we would go to the Course in Miracles gatherings, that we'd have the gathering inside and then a group would peel off. Oftentimes the smokers would peel off and would go outside and would they would have their little smokers Course in Miracles conference talk out there. And she was marveling at how the cigarettes were being used throughout the whole trip. Uh, we actually, when we got out to, I think it was Kansas, um, we were staying with this man and his wife and his wife was going through all this trauma and everything and so Lisa went out back with her and lit up a cigarette. The woman lit up a cigarette. That was, that was a symbol for them to connect and join on all these things that the woman needed to heal. The cigarettes got used as well. So for most people, they, they could think of cigarettes as a distraction, but they're just symbols in the dream. They're just dream symbols. They can be used by the spirit as well. The movies, for me, got used far from escapism. Uh, or escape, ego escapism. It was more like Holy Spirit escape from the world you made <laughs> escapism. The best kind of escapism, authentic awakening, which you're escaping the, the world of separation. You're being lifted into the miracle realms, into the higher realms of the mind. That's, that's a good use for movies. Um, music, I think I used it to distract uh, when I was younger. I would just want to close off from my parents, from school, from everything, put the headphones on, and I think I just tried to dive into it. And it wasn't all really inspiring. It was had a little more of an achy breaky part, you know, <laughs> all the stuff, you know, where you're you're wanting some music to commiserate with. That was that was a, not a helpful use. Although it, I did get in touch with a lot of emotions, which was helpful. That 
that helped me get in touch with a lot of sadness and hurt, you know, abandonment feelings, rejection feelings, you know, loneliness, da da da. The music helped me get more in touch with that, and I had to. I had to get more in touch with my feelings so I could release them. Then, as I went along, the, the music became much more inspiring, uplifting. Before I would go to work, I would string together these cassette tapes, you know, with all this great inspiring music. So I'd be flying as high as a kite when the car made it to work. And I would use the music in very inspirational ways, not to hide, but, but to actually bring myself into deeper alignment so that I, I would be energized. When, whenever I would show up at work or show up whatever. So, I think it's all in the turnaround. It's, it's not in labeling and judging things kind of as just distractions or negative, but really just in handing them over to the Holy Spirit and saying, you know, I have used this in a way that feels unhelpful. I want to give it to you to use in a way that is helpful. Even education can be used. All those years, the ten years of university, uh, I just had to just say, okay, you use it now. If there's any vocabulary or any th words that would be helpful for your purposes, then take it from me and use it. And that's been getting away from it being a distraction. I know that the ego used just hiding out in college and university as part of a distractive <laughs> device of hiding from the world at times, but when it's given over to the Holy Spirit, then it, it turns around in a, in a very loving, glorious way. A volunteer in our community recently who was invited to this uh, restaurant bar and was there for some hours and then kind of could feel the inner prompt when to stop, you know, with the drinking. And then some more people started showing up and basically this this guy, he just crossed over, he ignored the prompt, you know, like, that's your last one. He ignored that, went on and on and on with it, and then got drunk for the first time in quite a while. He'd been volunteering with us for a while. It had been an older pattern from earlier in his life. He just kind of broke through into that, got drunk, and then it, it experienced, like, intense guilt <laughs> the next morning. Uh, over that, like a big slip-up kind of thing. And and then uh, Jenny, who's part of our community, was just working with him, saying, well, actually, you are, have been advancing, advancing, advancing spiritually, and now you're just coming to the point where you're starting to teach more. You're just letting the Spirit pour through you and teach, and more eyes are on you. Because uh, whenever you're teaching, it's not the words that teach, but it's it's your attitude and, and all your behaviors and everything rolled into one. And so it was partly that, that there were people kind of looking to him, looking up to him, and so on and so forth. And the guilt was, ah, I messed up. I just really got drunk. But, but really, it's, it, the problem is not in the form. It's just when we get those little prompts, there's always little promptings in our mind. You know, we can go so far with something and it's okay, and then when we get that prompt and we ignore that prompt for whatever reason, you know, it could be unworthiness, could be anything underneath there, that's where the guilt comes in. And that's where it does turn into to a distraction. A distraction in the overall context of things, it, it doesn't do anything to the truth, obviously, but, but it, it is a delay maneuver. It's like an ego delay maneuver just delaying the awakening. And so then you have to forgive that. You know, you get good practice at forgiving, forgiving your mind for the delay maneuver as well.